Jesus himself said that a prophet has no honor in his own country. His own family didn't believe him, you know. His own brothers didn't believe him. Everyone in Nazareth rejected him, most rejected him. You know, the word says that he wasn't able to do much in his old, own hometown except for heal a few sick. Because as he said, a prophet has no honor in his own country amongst his own brethren. And uh, this is true. You know, before I came separate, before I left my mother and father and brothers, when I was still back at home, where I used to live, nobody believed me. No one truly believed, or at least some of, the, some of them pretended to believe, but most people thought I went nuts. My own family, you know, aunts, uncles, cousins, my own grandparents, no one took me serious. No one took anything I said serious. Not only that, but they themselves aren't saved and they're all Catholic. My grandparents didn't want to hear anything I had to say. My grandpa told me shut up every time I tried telling him about the Bible. That, you know, he said that the Catholic Church is the first church that ever existed, which is a complete lie. We all know it started 300 years after Christ. But, uh, anyway, besides that point, uh, the point I'm trying to make is, if you truly want to be used by God, you must come separate. You know, you must leave. Not exactly go to a different country per se, but you must go and preach the gospel and heal the sick and cast out demons, you know, do the will of God somewhere else. where away from your family because they won't believe most of the time I'm not saying you don't tell them the truth of course we tell them the truth that they may believe but most of the time our immediate families won't believe neither will, will our old friends or people that knew us in our past lives because when they knew us they knew us as a sinner so in their eyes, they see us as somebody who is unchanged to them, when in fact we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and we are being regenerated daily, being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Jesus marveled at their unbelief, at people's unbelief. And if Jesus Christ himself, you know, couldn't get his own hometown of Nazareth to believe. What makes you think you're any special to get people to believe in your hometown? Now, I'm not saying not to tell people the truth. Of course we must tell them so their blood is in a, on our hands, but don't expect to get everyone in your hometown to believe. And the word says, you know, we must come separate. We must not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I was unequally yoked with Catholics, you know, and they don't believe. They still don't believe to this day. They say they do, but they don't want to leave their false doctrines, their idolatry, their Mary worship, their vain repetitious prayer and their false doctrine. They don't want to leave it. So I had to come separate because the word says, Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. What fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? What communion does light have with darkness? So you must come separate. You can't be under the same roof as somebody who isn't saved. Because as long as you are, God's wrath abides on that house. 
because they don't really believe. And you're under that house, and you're yoked with them. So you must come separate as soon as possible, you know? I'm going to read a couple of verses here. I'm going to read some out of Matthew. Matthew 10.37 He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Matthew 19.29 And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Okay, this is pretty clear here. This is definitely clear. Those were Jesus' own words. That's what he commanded. You know, we shouldn't be loving our family or our friends or anything in this world at all more than we love Jesus Christ. And if you stay equally yoked with unbelievers in the same house, fellowshipping with people who, you know, smoke weed and drink and they believe in false doctrines and they don't want to listen to the truth and they don't love the truth and they don't they're still into sins and idolatry and pornography it's no good you gotta come separate touch not the unclean thing you know the father won't in accept you unless you touch not the unclean thing like it says here Like it says here in 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Not much people back where you live will believe you. My friends didn't believe me, my past friends, you know. Most of my fa- all of my family didn't believe me. Most of them didn't. They probably still don't believe. So, you know, there's no reason really to stay unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yes, you can keep them at a distance and keep telling them about Jesus so that they may believe that they may be saved, but you don't fellowship in their sin. You don't take part in their sin and you don't participate in their drunken parties, you know, their revelings and their whatever, their weed smoking, their, their idolatry in their churches. You know, I'll even go as far, probably not to go to a funeral, because it says, let God, you know, the word says, let the dead bury the dead. And it's not that I'm trying to be mean or unmerciful or that I hate them. It's that I want them all to repent. I want them to come to the truth of Jesus Christ. I want them to be saved. 
you know but we still can't fellowship or be unequally yoked with unbelievers even if they're family friends whoever you know you can keep them at that distance where you still tell them here and there you know to accept Jesus to turn from their sins you still keep them there that they may repent that they may be saved that their heart may not be hardened anymore that they may have eyes to see and ears to hear but uh the lord wants us to come separate to go do his will to preach the gospel and fulfill the great commission to cast out demons and heal the sick go out into all the world and do this and uh it's not very often or very likely that somebody in their own hometown will be able to convert everyone there. Don't really expect it. Yes, it's possible. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying nobody has truly done this. But like I said before, if Jesus Christ didn't do this, what makes you think that you can? That you are not the Son of God and you can do it. Doesn't make sense. So, uh, come separate and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Let not the unclean thing touch you. And be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Continuing fellowshipping in their sin and their foolishness and their worldly talk. But, uh... Be blessed in Jesus' name and have a good day.